Thanks for joining me for our next episode of Painting with a Maniac in the Fallout, Fallout Wasteland Warfare theme month. As you can see what you... onto the screen, obviously. Woo, my fingers, pretty fingers. But what you can see is Fallout Wasteland Warfare by Modifius Entertainment. And we have the Creatures Ghoul box set here. It comes with three feral ghouls. Uh, a green bloated, what's it called? Uh, it's the, a bloated glowing one and a putrid glowing one. So the bloated one is there. And the putrid one is there and these are feral ghouls. What we're painting out of this box set today is we're going to be painting the feral ghouls as you can see here. We're only going to paint one. I already painted two of them off camera just to decide the look because I always like changing up the look just slightly than what I've seen on the internet and the box art and so forth. So we're going to paint them up just a little different. They're going to look very close to this though. So I'll show you one in just a second to let you know the look that we are going to be achieving. This is the look that we're going to be achieving for the Feral Ghoul. Again, it is very similar to the box art, but it's a little bit different. You can see there, I still kept kind of like the grayish color for the skin for the clothing and the skin tone I changed up just ever so slightly and you can see there's a little bit of vomit going on too as well and if we look at the base you got the rusted onto the base and vomit going on the base too as well very easy to paint these feral ghouls don't take long at all to paint they're pretty quick especially when I only have like the the one color for the clothing for all of it that's if they're wearing pants or whatever some of them have bandages that have gray onto them too as well or ripped clothing as you can see so we're just going to go ahead and start painting this up and just you know again just follow along or just have me on in the background for some background noise it is up to you totally but just before we start just a reminder subscribe and click the bell notification if you haven't done already and also, if you want to become an official sponsor of Board Game Maniacs, just jump over to patreon.com and look up Board Game Maniacs and you can become an official sponsor to help us out to get miniatures such as this in, new paint, new games, and everything else in between. So let's get on with this painting. You can see the miniatures already assembled. Very easy to assemble. Again, all it is, you had to put a little bit of super glue on the feet because they're holes. And the feet have pins and you put them in and then it's just assembled and then i primed it in white and the reason why i chose them white again is because that is the only color white that i did that's the only color primer that i had at hand at the moment when i primed them so that's what i did and i noticed here i have a little bit because i did do some scraping to it the seam lines or mold lines i should say not a whole lot um so again i'm just using my scraper here just to clean up that one little bit that i missed you can see it's all good and we're ready to go pretty easy so the first thing we're going to paint is going to be the skin tone we're going to be using our wet palette today and just a little tiny touch of water and the skin tone you see there is Kislev Flesh by Citadel it is a layer paint pretty simple we're just going to apply it on all of the skin tone if we go over a bit onto the clothing no big deal because we're going to be painting that separately and you can see I'm using like a really small uh, brush, a 970 series white Taclon, Taclon I should say, it's a 10 slash zero. Some people are interested in what type of brushes that I'm using, so just showing everybody what it is. So again, we're just gonna apply it onto the flesh tone first. Pretty easy, and again, wet palette water down just slightly and you're just gonna paint away and because where I did base it what I'm gonna take advantage of that in spots and where the flesh tone when it dries it's gonna be kind of patchy but they're feral ghouls their skin isn't gonna be immaculate by no means and I'm going to take advantage of that by leaving some of the white show through so that when I put the wash onto it then the highlight onto the skin then it just the white's going to show through to to make it you know in parts that I want to be brought out more or look like it's 
it's protruding, I should say, like the jaw bones or anything. The eyes, the eyes, not the eye sockets, but the eye bone, like the orbital fossa. That is the name of the bone, if anybody's wondering. Then, you know, like, I can just leave the white show through a little bit there. Or I can throw more highlight on it, obviously. And as I say in all of my painting along with Maniac videos, I am not a professional painter in no means, so take this the way you want to take it. You can have this on as background noise. You can, you know, take it like I'm a professional painter, but I'm letting you know I am far from a miniature professional painter by no means. So this could just be background noise for you. But in either case, I would love to hear what you think of like my lighting setup and you know stuff like that camera angles my techniques for painting obviously because this is the only way I'm gonna learn is by doing I learn with every miniature I paint and with every comment that you make on my painting with the maniac I learn to as well so I thank you for that keep the comments rolling because I love it I love it all it's just awesome and thank you. Now, on top of that, just a couple other things I want to talk about while, you know, I'm just trying to make some noise here while I'm painting, instead of being all nice and quiet. And that is about, I'm going to repeat this a couple of times for the videos. I think this will be released in March, if I'm not mistaken. So in March, I mean, back in December, I should say, the end of December, when it was changing to the year 2020, I made an updated channel where I listed some video games, not video games, some board games, tabletop games, on the description into the comment section saying that I want every, all the viewers and subscribers and so on to vote on what they would like to see extra. Oh, there's that little flat that I thought I got. Ah, see? Kind of just blend it right in. Well, it's gone. Anyhow. I wanted to uh, everybody to vote on games that have been played that is on the channel or even ones that haven't been played that you would like to see. And if there's enough votes for that specific game, then we are going to play an ongoing series as an ongoing campaign. Now, because of that one vote that uh, I did manage to get a lot of in my email more so than the comments and when I see emails it's boardgamemaniacs at gmail.com and that was that they wanted to see more hero quest so we're going to be playing a lot more hero quest on the channel continuing campaign we are going to finish Keller's Keep and then we'll see exactly what we're going to do after that because I'm not 100% sure but again that was one of the videos one of the games that people have voted on and we listened and we're doing it that's right so we're finishing Keller's Keep and then we'll continue on from there I don't know exactly what we're gonna do yet what's the next expansion because I think Shane actually has a couple of expansions still or at least one more that we can play so we're gonna continue that so if you want to see such things as this game Fallout Wasteland Warfare then by all means just come and say like hey I want to see more of that gameplay because I really like the game. Or you don't even have to explain why. You just say, fall away somewhere for I want to see more. I'd like to hear and actually read more of your comments that why you like the game. Uh, that'd be interesting. But it's not necessary, obviously. And we are going to be playing more because where this is the theme month for Fall Out Waste and Warfare, there are going to be at least two or more gameplay videos. It may be a solo one if they're not a release yet or it may also be like um a, a 1v1 player one or it could be like a, a co-op game duh just struggling for it's like usual but in either case let us know what if you would like to see more of this follow-up way somewhere for personally i would want to see more because the games that i've played i didn't play a lot of it but it's just so enjoyable, this game, and it can be so unpredictable, especially when you're playing with the AI, because you really don't know what they're going to do until you roll that die for the AI, and it determines, and it will tell you, hey, this is what the AI is doing. That makes a game's 
replayability a lot. And I love replayability on games, unpredictableness of it. Like, it, it just, so much stuff happens in that game and it's so enjoyable. Like, Modifius Entertainment did such a great job on doing this game. And like, whenever I post some pictures of stuff that I'm doing or I have a table set up or, or what have you, I'm always getting comments saying like, I love this game, this game is so fun. This game is awesome. I have so much fun playing this game. Like, there's so much stuff and so many people that have been making comments about it that it, it just goes to showing that there's a huge following that is a loyal following for this game. And that is awesome because when you got the support, the community support back in you, it, you just you can keep playing it and you know that there's going to be other players that's going to play the game with you and and so on because it, it just it's overwhelming and you know you have the support there if you ever get stuck on something because i'm a member of one of the facebook facebook face group pages for fallout waste some warfare and because I am still new to the game, I do ask questions into it and they are replying very fast. So thank you very much for all of the help and input that I've been getting back from the community because it just makes things go by so much better. And on top of being going by so much better that uh, it just makes the game more enjoyable because you know that there's more people out there playing the game and you know that there's more people that may have encountered stuff that you're not sure about or even just other people that paint the miniatures and everything else that you can say hey how did you paint this miniature or you know all different things such as that everything helps and it's awesome to hear that to see that kind of support for games such as this one whoa that was a big spiel there a big mouthful but it, it's well worth talking about this game. I am, like I said, I enjoy it very much and I'm hoping to play it more and more. Even I am gonna play it more and more, whether it's on camera or not, it don't make a difference to me. Well, it kind of does make a difference because I'd like to include more games on the channel, but it's not that if people don't vote for it, I'm not gonna be playing it because I'm still gonna be playing it. it. may not be just all on the channel, but I will be playing this game. Woo! Having said that, anybody who is in Canada that is watching these this theme month of Fallout Waste and Warfare, and if you live in the Niagara region, and you want to come on the on the channel and play some Waste and Warfare, challenge me and play some dice, you know, teach me some more of this game, by all means, just send us an email and let us know, like, hey, I want to come on the channel and play this, or even... I don't want to be on the on the video, but I want to come play the game because I'm up for some challenges. I'm up for some co-op missions. I'm up for a whole bunch of different types of games for these for this because this game, like I said, I am falling in love with with Fallout Waste and Warfare very easily and quickly. It's awesome. Uh, with all that rambling done now, like I'm always going to ramble. It's that's a given. But I got the base coat on for this, uh, the Feral Ghoul. I'm liking it. You know, I I'm noticing a little bit more. I can clean up a little bit like you can see right there. So I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to finish painting this off. And when this is dry, we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint the, uh, the clothing onto him. So just hold, hold on to your hats and I'll be back. Alrighty, since we're done painting the Kislev flesh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the clothing with draw stone gray. Now the draw stone gray is going to go on their clothing and also too as well as I'm going to paint it onto the base too as well. I have it mixed in my wet palette. And I'm just going to paint away just like this. I'm whispering. It's boring. Alrighty, so uh, questions about Fallout Wasteland Warfare I have. And that is if you've seen, uh, actually first a comment, and the comment I'm making 
In general, as if you've seen any of my tabletop games like Project Z and so forth on the channel, you'll know that I love setting up terrain and I like to make it look as, you know, what I think is really cool. Now, Fallout Wasteland Warfare is not a game that you should play with no terrain. You can if you want. But because it is followed, it does follow, you know, the Fallout universe and everything. Uh, it's good to have some nice apocalyptic terrain. And I built a couple of things. I made some signs, some banners for it. You know, uh, I painted up some existing terrain just to match Fallout a little bit more. Um, what I would... What I'd like to know is actually like to see is anybody who have done the same, like made their own train for Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Because if you did, I would love to see it. Again, email me some photos at boardgamemaniacs at gmail.com and let me know, you know, like what you did for Fallout Wasteland Warfare, the stuff that you made. Because I love terrain, like I love tables that are full of terrain. Not like totally, total terrain over the entire board that you can't move and play the game. That's, that's just kind of, it may look visually pleasing, but to play it on is a nightmare. But I like to see games that, you know, have just a, enough terrain onto the board to make it look cool and it's still accessible. And there's a happy medium for that, like, how much terrain you should put on in that, but by playing the game, you're going to learn this. And I kind of find it maybe a little difficult to try to not put as much terrain on, because again, I love the look of terrain. It brings me, it sucks me into that game, into that realm and everything else, that genre of the game. And that's just, that's just me though, I love that. Some people like playing with less terrain, some people like playing with like super dense. It's totally up to you and I understand that. But I would like to hear everybody's opinions and thoughts about that. Like, what do you prefer to play on? Do you like playing on a, a tabletop that is rich with terrain, full of terrain? Do you like playing on that has like a little bit of train or no train at all like I'd, I'd be interested to hear what everybody's thoughts are on to that and what Fallout Waste and Warfare like you can use the train to your your advantage and sometimes it can hinder some players because of the rules devoted to train like some people forget namely me well I'm still learning but I, I would play it and it's like ha ah, like I'm gonna shoot you and destroy you because I got a super powerful weapon but you have to minus modifiers before you unite make your roll to destroy them because minus two modifier for each piece of terrain that is kind of like blocking your line of sight or in your line of sight which is interesting uh Medifius entertainment the, the way that they did something what i understand and from playing the game is that you know, it, it's very realistic. If you have one piece of terrain, it's going to be harder to shoot somebody at, over. If you have more than two pieces of terrain blocking, it's going to be even more difficult and so on. So it, it kind of, it's cumulative to the point that, you know, you're not going to shoot somebody who is a distance away that has a lot of intervening terrain. It's just, you're wasting it. And plus, you can't get negatives onto the dice, like for the... You know, you reduce it down and everything else. So, you, your skill dice, I should say. And I really like that about the game. It, it's a lot of fun like that because it makes you, you really, really have to think. You have to plan out all your moves. It's like chess, more so. And it, it just, again, this is all my own personal opinions onto this game. I'm sure everybody has their own ideas or what they think of the game. And again, I would love to hear them. Comment down below and let me know. I'd love to hear, you know, your thoughts about the mechanics in general or what you think works best and what you think works the least, the least amount. Now, I haven't encountered anything for best or least yet because, again, I'm still very new to playing this game, but I'm determined to learn more and more about this game because this game is incredible, in my opinion. 
And I am really hoping that this gets voted on for con more continuous gameplay onto the channel because I'm down to play this more. And as I said before, I'm still going to play it regardless, but I'm leaving it up to the viewers, subscribers, the Patreon supporters. Say so like, hey, yeah, I want to play more. I want you to play more of this, or I don't want you to play it at all, and anything else. Which brings me to my next point. A lot of people like the fact that I'm letting you, the viewers, vote on what games you want to see on the channel. So, just say, for instance, you are one of my Patreon supporters. When you vote onto it, onto a game that you want to see on the channel, your vote is doubled because, you know, you are supporting. You're the one that's helping pay for these games, pay for the miniatures, pay for the paint and the lights and everything else. So you're going to have double votes. And what you can do if you are a Patreon supporter is just on our Patreon page, Board Game Maniacs, you can just send me a message or you can do a comment and say like, hey, I want you to play this. I would like to see you play this on the channel. And again, it counts more double votes. I do get a lot of emails too as well from viewers and subscribers talking to me about you know, games that they see on the channel, what they want to see more and everything else. So it, there's many ways of contacting Board Game Maniacs to let us know your thoughts. Uh, such as we have an Instagram account. We have a Twitter account, which is not very active because it, I'm kind of using Twitter just for live streaming. This new year, I am planning on going to be doing more live streaming. It's just to get to that point. It's a little difficult because my computer's been having a little bit of issues with live streaming and I don't want the stream to quit during it because it just, it gets aggravating. You know, you, you get involved in watching a game. It's like, oh, this is a lot of fun. I wonder what's going to happen or whatever. You get, or you get involved in the conversation and then all of a sudden the stream just quits because of technical issues and that kind of sucks. So I don't want to have the technical issues. That's why if you jump onto the Patreon, you'll see one of the things I want to do is I have a goal to raise enough money to get a new gaming computer. When I say gaming computer, I don't mean for playing video games because I don't play video games. Well, I do, but not really. I want a new, a new computer. They're called gaming computers, editing computers, so that I can edit. I can do more live streaming, have more camera angles and everything else like that's very important and that's the total reason why like the uh our twitter account has been very quiet i mean super quiet because of that fact that i'm having a lot of issues with my computer that i have right now for trying to set up to do live streaming because if you notice i think it was last year 2019 wow 2019 last year it's kind of sound strange but in either case I think it was 2019 that we were gearing up for a role-playing campaign for Starfinder, which I was looking so forward to doing. I had a lot of the games, you know, all the components and everything else. We created, we shot a video actually, live streaming video on the creation of our characters and everything else. And then that kind of just fizzled out because of my computer having the issues. I'm slowly working on it to try to get it resolved, but uh, I'm running into walls with it because I'm having lots of difficulties. It, it's, it's all pointing out to hardware issues, which means I have to upgrade my computer and the amount of upgrading I'm gonna have to do, it, it, it's not cheap. So it, it's probably gonna be better if I just get another computer, gaming computer or editing computer, I should say, and just, go from there. I'm just taking a drink of my juice there. Sorry. But that's what I'm thinking. And I'm hopefully gonna get one into the uh, somewhat near future. It just, with Patreon supporters like you, it, it helps, helps more. It, it makes my dreams become reality more or my needs which are my dreams too as well, obviously. I do, to uh, get a little bit more closer. I'm not even on camera, I'm paying attention. Jeez. So anyhow, 
that's my little spiel about Patreon and so on. Uh, so I think he, he's good with the gray for the, his clothing, for the base coat. So I'm not going to bore you too much. I'm just going to paint this. I'm leaving this part out not gray because that is a great, like a seal grading. We're going to pay that dip, paint that differently. And the rocks here are going to be the draw stone gray too as well. So when I'm finished painting his base with the base color of the dress on gray too as well, I'll be back and we'll continue on from that point. Now that I have all of the um, the, the gray painted the draw stone gray, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually paint over the grates. Now you can see I already painted some of the draw stone gray in between the grates. So we're just gonna cover up the grates and we're gonna be using lead belcher for that. Now, I'm not gonna water the lead belcher down for this. This is gonna be just straight out of the pot because I don't want any of the white showing through. I want it to be thick. So again, we're just gonna paint that up as carefully as possible. Some of the white is gonna show through like from where the draw stone gray is obviously. But that's no big deal because the uh, effects that I'm doing after the wash, the effect paint that I'm putting onto it, it it's going to produce more of a rusty effect and it's also going to cover up that white too as well from where I missed it. So yeah, that's, that's all I'm doing. I'm just being as careful as possible to paint up all of these uh, the grates. I lost the word. I'm like, what's the name of that? What's the name? Because I already said it, but I totally lost it. So, yeah. Yeah, just like that. So pretty simple so far. And th this whole paint job I found was very basic. And the objective for my painting, like I'm not trying to win awards or or anything like that. My objective for all the painting that I do is simply to get the, the miniatures on the table as fast as possible. And that's gonna be kind of like the the theme here for all of my uh, my painting tutorials. You can see the white is still showing through there, but that's, that's totally fine. I knew that was gonna happen. And I have no problem with that happening because I'm just going to just add to it more, yeah. It's going over it. So when this is dry, we're going to start the wash. It's, it's only one wash that we're going to throw onto it before the highlight. So pull on your hats. We'll be back after this is dry and we'll start the shading or the washing, whatever you want to call it. Since it's all dry with the lead belcher and everything else, my next step is with the wash. And I'm just going to be using some Agrax Earth Shade by Citadel. And we're going to just wash the entire miniature and we're not going to do it selectively. We are throwing the wash on everywhere, nice and heavy, because I want him to be nice and dirty. Because we all know that I like it dirty. Yeah. Miniatures, that is. So again, onto the base too. Kind of throwing it around everywhere. Making it all you know, grimy as possible. Because he is a feral ghoul. And, you know, I don't think he really cares about his cleanliness. I don't think he does, you know. I could be wrong. Maybe he does. Maybe he don't. I don't know. But this guy right here that I'm painting, I am saying that he don't care about his cleanliness. He just cares about being a feral ghoul. Whoa. Again, loading it up everywhere. Nice and thick, especially into the grates. You can see here, because it's gonna all flow in there anyhow. I like how his eyes are. I'll bring him down. I was just holding it up like this because I was looking at the base part. I'll bring it down. His eyes are all nice and filled in with the wash, which is what I wanted to make like completely sunken eyes, deep set, you know, very ghoulish, ghouly, ghoulish, ghouly, 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 ghouly. Yeah, I try to say that ten times fast. Oh boy! All right, so. 
that here is he got something hanging off of him right there it's gone so that is the wash part i'm going to leave this dry and then when we come back we're just going to throw some finishing touches like highlighting and everything and then he'll be good to go now that all of the shade is dry the agrax earth shade um you can see here it's definitely did a lot of pooling around the bottom of the base which I was really hoping for because I want it to be as dirty looking as possible you can also see here that he got some pooling going on in the you know his lower back nice and a little shadow there underneath his pant leg really cool I really like where I added so much of the wash so that it would turn out dirty so the next thing I'm going to do now it's pretty simple uh, you see me do this on other painting uh, Painting with the Maniac series, if you've been watching. And all, I, all I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush everything with Longbeard Gray. And when I say dry brush everything, I mean everything from the base to like his skin and everything else. I'm going to clean that off a little bit more. Again, gentle dry brushing just to bring out all of the highlights. Again, I'm, I'm just going very light with it. I got a good amount of product on my brush, though. It looks like he's got a voodoo mask there. I wasn't watching what I was doing, but I can fix it up. I kind of like the voodoo mask, actually. A little bit of different look to him. Yeah, put some on his head, top of his head, too. Just throw some highlights. Oh, the old devil looks like he's got a voodoo mask. Pretty cool. I'm going to keep that. This is going to be my voodoo ghoul because he's really ghoul. Oh, ghoul. Yep, so again, just dry brushing. Very simple. Nothing too complicated. Again, as I said previously in this same video, that I'm not trying to win any awards or anything. All I'm doing is I'm trying to get them painted as fast as possible to get them on the table so that I could use them to play the games with. That's all. Like. As long as they're painted, then, you know, they're good enough for me. Got to be a little bit of quality to them, but it, it don't have to be like excellent, high quality that's above tabletop. I consider this to be tabletop quality, you know, good enough on camera. That's all what matters to me. So you can see here, it's a little overpowering there, but I Again, I, I like that voodoo style. Might even add a little bit more to it. Because he looks pretty creepy looking. Yeah. I like that voodoo style. Maybe he'll be like the, the head ghoul. The head feral ghoul. I'm just going to add a little bit more to my dry brush here. Just kind of bring it a little bit more. I like that. They may not be a head goal in the, the game, but he's my head goal. Julian Goulian. Oh, yeah. Let me sure get up top here, too, as well, just to like me. All right, so that's a good highlight on the miniature. So now I'm just going to dip in. Again to the long beard gray and we're gonna highlight like all of the stuff here. You can see that's a little too much. But again, I can clean up my brush enough. There we go. That's that's what I'm looking for. That amount right there. Make sure you get all around the edges of it. And we're very close to being finished for this ghoul. The only thing left that I want to do is just add some rust effect onto the grating part and then maybe some vomit. You know, he's a ghoul. I'm going to want him to vomit. And he's the head boss guy. The other, the other ghouls have some vomit on them too as well, so we're going to do the same. So that is it for the dry brushing with the long beard gray. If I kind of have it in, you can see there. A little heavy onto his clothes right there. I really like that. It kind of brings everything out. Oh, he's he's turning to be pretty nasty. All right. So what I'll do is I'll be back in a moment. It's going to let this sit for a second, and then I'll be back, and we'll add the uh, tech colors 
on the rust first here and then we'll do the vomit. Next step is adding the rust, like I said. Now, we're not gonna use the Citadel line. To add rust, pretty much, it's broken down into three different colors. It's like a burnt umber with a black and then an orange. So you can use pretty much any kind of, uh, any color you want. And you could probably pull off a nice half decent rust effect. But because I have these, these are given to me and I've used them for the other one to keep consistency going. So it's from Vallejo, the paint that I'm using. So oxidized seco or seco dry rust and also oxidized rust oxid oxidile rust oxidized rust yeah but anyhow they are vallejo vallejo line of colors they're like the tech colors and what i like to do when i'm painting that is i'll start off with like the darker color and i will paint i want to keep some of the uh the lead belcher showing through a long beard gray so just in certain spots just adding a little bit here sometimes I get carried away with the rust because I really like the look of it like that's not bad like it is but I want some orange rust too so I'm gonna grab a little bit of orange rush here rust jeez just add it to some spots here because it is rusty Have a little bit of it. You can pick it up there. Just a little bit. Like, I don't want it to be overwhelmingly rusty. But enough that when you look, you're going to say, you know what? That is rusty. Just like that. And just to smear out that little bit, I'm going to use a Q-tip. It is wet because I put it in my mouth. And I'm just dabbing it just to tone it down just a little bit. You can see there, it's a little toned down. Nice, nice, very nice. That one spot I'm not happy with. There we go. That is very nice rust, very nice. And then, you know, you can mix the two colors together. Get a little more of a different variation. Again, I'm starting to get too rusty. Uh, too rusty. It's funny. Just a little bit. Bam! Bam! There's your rust effect. Very easy. And because I'm still rolling, and it's in the same line, I'm going to be using Vomit. It's a zombie paint series that was released. I'm just shaking this up a little bit. Just give me one second. I like the look of this zombie, uh, the, the vomit. You can use Nurgle Rot and everything else, but again, I, I like using this, so I'm just going to give him a little bit of uh, vomit on his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. And where it would fall. His leg kind of go down. His knee. I'm just dabbing a little bit off. And on his foot, obviously, because went from his mouth, it's like, uh, drip, drip, drip. Actually, it would hit a little bit here, too. And then hit here, run down, hit his knee, and then kind of hit his foot. And then start pulling around. E a lot of vomit, man. Ew. Yeah, I know. But hey, gotta add them little details. That's what kind of sells it. May not be the best paint job in the world, but it has a little bit of details that just make it look that much more better. There. Just like so. Gonna let that dry. And the only other step I'm going to do after that is I'm going to paint the rim black with Abaddon Black. I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, so now just the Abaddon Black from Citadel Line. You can see there. All I'm doing is just going around the base and making it black. It's not rocket science. 
No, it's not rocket science. It's miniature science. Again, just a quick little paint job. You know, I think the longest part of this paint job is waiting for paints to dry. Because I don't want to add other colors on top of wet paint so it mixes it and that. And, you know. One thing I do realize though is no matter what paint job I give on any miniature, if I don't like them, it's, it can always be just, you know, painted over, cleaned off and painted over again. So I've done that lots of times. It's increasing the size of the black rim a little bit here. Now, one other thing I want to talk about, and that is that when you're doing this, I never mentioned this in the last video, which will be the first video for the painting of mania painting with a maniac in the series for the uh, Fallout Wasteland Warfare month. But one thing I didn't mention with this is that uh, when you're done doing all of your painting, you want to protect your painting as much as possible. And which means a sealer. Now, in the past month before this is released, there were some more painting tutorials that are done in the past. And I talked about uh, a sealer that I use called Testers. It's Aztec Testers. It's a clear and I just airbrush it on. But there, you don't have to use that. You can use whatever kind of sealer you want. That's just one of the many sealers that I use. Now, I recently picked up some sealer from Citadel. It's a rattle can spray and you, I sprayed some of the miniatures that I painted previously with that too as well. So just keep that in mind, you know, the key thing is to make sure you protect your paint job because if you don't and you start playing with it on the with games and everything else, the paint's going to start chipping off and rubbing off and everything. And all that hard work that you did to do your paint job is, you know, it, it's not worth it because you wasted so much time doing it and you're not protecting it. So just always make sure to seal your paint. So there's that, the, uh, the other feral ghoul you can see it's very close extremely close to bases too as well his base is a little lighter i also gave him that voodoo mask which i really like happy accidents happy accidents and i painted another feral ghoul too as well i'm just trying not to move him so until he dries so the other feral ghoul that i painted because it comes with three feral ghouls in that box set that i showed you is this guy right here again he's i made more vomit made him a little bit more messy because he's kind of, his hands are a little dirty too as well. See, he chowed down, or not chowed, he's not a zombie, but he attacked and, you know, killed Settler or somebody else or whatever. But that's another one right there that I painted. Oh, and that's it. Not too difficult. Actually, it was pretty easy. One of the easier miniatures I painted, this feral ghoul. I really like him. And I'm going to just end it off here, the video. Now, Again, this is the month for Fallout Wasteland Warfare by Modifius Entertainment. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, click on the bell notification, jump over to Patreon if you want to become an official sponsor of Board Game Mainax. You can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. But again, there's nothing really going on that much at Twitter until I figure out what I'm going to do for live streaming. But check all them out, leave some comments, show me some love. You know, I hope you're enjoying this theme month for Fallout Wasteland Warfare, because I certainly am. I love the game. The miniatures are great. I like painting the miniatures. And the assembly, which I do not like a lot, is super simple. Not assembly of these miniatures, but assembly in general. I don't like assembling miniatures at all, but very easy to assemble these. Super, super easy. So, great. Thank you very much for doing that, making it as easy as possible. Uh, what else can I say? Look on to the theme month too as well for more painting with Maniac because I'm going to be painting a couple of more creatures. Unfortunately, I don't have any unpainted like Brotherhood of Steel or Settlers or anything that I could show you. I got them all painted up already. I was excited to get them painted. But from where I received the, uh, the vermin pack and the creatures, creature pack, the ghouls for one of my Christmas presents, going to paint it up and hopefully include that in some of the future battle reports that are going to be on this channel. 
Don't forget to check out the 2020 update video where it has a list of games so you can do a vote and let me know what you like to see on the channel played on a regular basis once or twice every month. And that's pretty much about it. That's all I can say about that. So thanks for joining me for this painting with the maniac. And I'll see you in the next video, but most importantly of all, when you're playing games, and that is, you know what I'm going to say, that is, take your feral ghoul with you. No, 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 no. Well, you can take that too as well, depending on the game. But that is, be a maniac. See you next time. Boo. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's my feral ghoul voice. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to keep up to date with Board Game Maniacs, click on the like and subscribe button to be notified when more videos come available. If you want to become an official sponsor of Board Game Maniacs, go to patreon.com slash boardgamemaniacs. Or you can go to streamlabs.com slash boardgamemaniacs1. That's right, and you can donate to help keep the lights on, keep food in our bellies, and play more games. We'll purchase more games, more equipment to make Board Game Maniacs evolve and get bigger and larger because of you, the viewers. I thank you from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head for all of your support. And until next time, Board Game Maniacs, be a maniac.